This is the Stella by Starlight chord melody jazz guitar arrangement that I'm going to teach you in this lesson. Stella by Starlight is a classic jazz standard with a beautiful melody that mostly stays within one major scale, but the harmony moves around like crazy, constantly changing keys, which is one of the things that makes this tune so lush and alluring. All the greats played this tune. Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, Joe Pass, Ella Fitzgerald, Lenny Bro, George Benson, Jim Hall, John Coltrane, Bill Evans, Chet Baker, Keith Jarrett, Stan Getz, Frank Sinatra, Art Tatum, Grant Green, the list goes on. Any of these artists you could look up, find their, them playing this tune, Stella by Starlight. I created this arrangement as a chord melody where there's a chord shape supporting almost every melody note. Check out my playlist on chord melodies. I'll put a link to that in the description. So almost every melody note has a chord supporting it, and then I adapted it from there to be more like a complete solo guitar arrangement by separating the articulation of the melody and the chords a little more so they really stand out as individual parts. If you want the sheet music and the tabs of this Stella by Starlight chord melody jazz guitar arrangement, you can download it for free. It's in my free solo guitar arrangement pack. Just click the link in the top of the description to get it or go to Sound Guitar Lessons dot com slash moon. First, I'm going to play you the full chord melody arrangement with the sheet music and tabs on the screen. You'll see how what I'm playing lines up exactly with what's being shown on the screen. So you can take the whole thing in that way, see it and hear it. And that demonstration will also serve as a great benchmark for you to work towards playing along with. I'll be playing it at exactly 120 beats per minute. After that, I'm gonna walk through the piece and choose a few different spots to point out and share some technique advice and some interpretation advice to help you play it as smoothly as possible, to help you play it as clean as possible. It's a pretty advanced arrangement, but uh, with a few pieces of advice and a few areas we'll point out, it'll help you get the best sound out of this arrangement. And at the end, I'll show you how you can use a few different right hand techniques to play this arrangement. It doesn't have to be finger style, even though that's what I'm doing for the demonstrations. So that will be at the end. That's what we're gonna cover. Let's get into it. Oh, by the way, I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach how to go deep and become skilled musicians on the guitar and how to get more creative and express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. Okay, here's the full demonstration with the sheet music and tabs on the screen. One, two, three. That was it. Let me recommend some ways to play this at a high level, to play it clean, to play it smooth, to play it uh, relaxed, and just how to interpret it. Point number one, never, ever, ever sacrifice the melody. The melody is the main thing. So if you're gonna concern yourself with anything, concern yourself with the melody being the most connected or the getting the tone you want or uh, definitely being the loudest and really coming out as... You'll hear me sometimes have a huge contrast. Between the melody and the accompaniment, just in volume, and then therefore in tone as well. So I'm really... Sometimes... Sometimes I'm exaggerating that, and sometimes not. I really like to... So the... I'm following the melody just as 
as the main thing, the, as the song, and then the harmony is supporting underneath. So one way to separate the melody and the accompaniment other than dynamics and other than just making sure the melody is connected is to use the rests in this arrangement anyway, the rests that are in the accompaniment. So right here in the first measure, and then ba, ba, the melody between measure one and two is ringing. And then you have and there's a little muted spot, and I'll mute with my right hand. Melody, ba, ba, ba. Oh, I just love that. I think it brings so much depth. And you know, I have a little reverb on here, but there's that's really separating the accompaniment from the melody by utilizing those rests. You'll see in measure three, there's also a spot. There's a little rest, and it just gives it a little bit of rhythmic syncopation when we do that. Another great example of this is measure 16 on the A minor 7 flat 5 chord. We have... So that C in the top is ringing. And that chord underneath has a whole quarter note rest while the melody on top is ringing. So take advantage of those rests in the accompaniment while the melody continues to ring. Another tip here is to just play more rubato. I played it very strictly in time, how the sheet music is written out so I could show you the sheet music and play it at the same time for my demonstration. But if I were to really perform this or do a recording of it and release it as, as music, um, I would be a lot more free with it. So one example is just right at the beginning where there's a quarter note and you go one, two, three, four, one. Um, you can be way more rubato with that. If you want to, it can be ballad like, it can be very rubato. I was just giving an example there of just like stretching the time as much as I want and or change rhythms anywhere you want. In this third measure, da boo do da da da, you can go da do da da, right? Different accompaniment on the bottom. I mean, this is just an arrangement that I. I always make an arrangement of any tune that I wanna know as part of my repertoire or do a chord melody and or solo guitar arrangement of it. And so I'll do that, but I don't always write it out. I wrote this out to teach you. And there's so many decisions for me to make, like, hmm, how do I wanna write this out? Because I often play it differently. So I might on this C minor seven go da, 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 da or da, 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 which is how it's written, or, Buh, 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 right? So if you want to start to explore, hmm, how would I, if I were the artist or if you were the arranger and you had 100% control over how do I actually want to play this, what would you change? What do you maybe hear? What do you feel? What version have you listened to that inspires you? You're allowed to change whatever you want. You're the artist. Speaking of that, my next tip is to let yourself change the voicings even, which is maybe obvious from my last tip, but I have a specific example here. In measure 23 to 24, there's a B flat major nine chord. C is the melody, that's the nine of the chord, that's why it's B flat major nine. Um, and then I have the root in the bottom, and then, and then, so that's root seven, three, and then five. But that's really hard one to play and hard to get to in context. And you can just leave that root out, right? So I might play it, sometimes I play it like this, uh, where I go, and then right so this is that same voicing that same b flat major nine but without the root where i played the nine seven three five and you don't have to be thinking of it that way but i just took that low note out because the bar is really hard to get to so if i really want to hear that i'll reach for it if not i'll just fill it in this way so you can change voicings to make them easier on you you can just not play a chord when i'm doing the arrangement itself I have to decide. So this voicing right here, this is measure 23 during the A flat seven sharp 11 chord. Okay, that's the second beat of, of 23, measure 23. Well, what if you just want it to just play the melody only? So these are choices that also gets us in tune with if you were arranging your own thing, where would you want to support and where would you not want to? So if we went, You still get a chord here. You still get this chord here. It wasn't that bad. 
to not include that chord in between. So you're allowed to change things. Here's the biggest point of all, the biggest tip, the most important thing for all guitar playing, especially solo guitar playing, put your fingers down only as you need them, okay? This is all over the place. Like if you go to measure three, C minor seven, you have to bar there because you have to prepare for what's gonna happen with the bar, but I'm not putting down this note here, <laughs> this B flat, until I need it. Okay, so that's one example. Let's jump to measure 11, where there's an E minor seven flat five chord and then an A seven flat nine chord. One of my favorite spots here. So right before that, we're playing a D with the pinky. I love this. That little spot there. And what comes right before that is... Okay, so that's measure eight, or sorry, measure 10, da, 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 measure 11. Okay, I'm here with my pinky first. And then I put down, and I'm on the, the end of the last measure, and then I put down my first finger, then I put down my middle finger, that open G, then I have to open A. So put those down as I need them. And that, so it goes with every single spot you possibly can. Don't make a shape. Don't make a chord shape just because you're gonna end up there. Put your fingers down as you need them to play clean. That is, that is the secret. My final piece of advice to play a solo guitar arrangement or chord melody arrangement uh, even better is to know the melody separately from the arrangement, not just where you play it in the arrangement. Think of it within like a position or a scale form and in a couple octaves. So in this case, think in the B flat major scale. And that's like in the fifth position there. So really, I'm just rushing through it there to demonstrate that I'm playing it and thinking of it around. There's two notes that are outside of the scale that are chromatic notes uh, outside of the B flat major scale. The rest is just B flat major scale. So I'll play it up here too. territory that the arrangement uses because we're on the top string. So that's long game stuff, but that helps me immensely with interpreting, performing, feeling good about my interpretation and execution of a solo guitar arrangement or the chord melody arrangement, and especially helps with, you know, creating the arrangement in the first place. So if that's one of your goals, definitely internalize the melody as a melody and just thinking of it within a scale form or within interval relationships and seeing it, hearing it, feeling it on the fretboard. The last thing we're gonna talk about, like I said, is just that this doesn't have to be a finger style thing, even though I was playing it with fingers. Uh, you can use a pick and this works beautifully with a pick. I really like it a lot. So not every arrangement works that way. It depends on what's in it, but you can get away with just strumming every chord with a pick and, uh, or, and or use your thumb completely, which is nice too. I like this a lot. I'm not as used to that. So I have a harder time distinguishing the chords underneath, but if I wanted to do it that way, I would work work on it and get it clean. Uh, so I think that's a cool thing about this arrangement. You don't have to be a finger style uh, player if you're using only pick, it works really well. And I really like the sound of it that way. If you want these sheet music and tabs of this exact arrangement for free, just download my solo guitar arrangement pack. There's a link in the top of the description and or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. There's a few other awesome arrangements in that solo guitar arrangement pack. Autumn Leaves is one of them, Fly Me to the Moon is one of them um, and this Stella by Starlight uh, chord melody solo guitar style arrangement. Uh, so I hope you grab that and have some great uh, practicing sessions with it. Let me know in the comments if you want more videos on chord melody, jazz guitar, or solo guitar arrangements. We could do this on any tune. It's one of my favorite things to practice and do anytime I want to work on a song and make sure I 
do a little arrangement of it. So if you want to know more about that or have a specific song request, just let me know in the comments. I did a video recently on my Autumn Leaves solo guitar arrangement. I'll post a link to that video in the description. I have a new video lesson come out every week. Next week's lesson is on being able to completely improvise from scratch a full solo finger picking guitar sound. Uh, that's gonna be really fun. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.